This is Creator with Trailer Days. Today we're going to show you how to winterize an RV. Fifth wheel, travel trailer, motorhome, uh, pop-up tent trailer. We've got three different ones to use as examples here so you get a pretty good idea of what you're doing. This here is a 1970s model uh, Holiday Rambler travel trailer. There we have a 90s model uh, Holiday Rambler fifth wheel. And we also have a little Coleman pop-up tent trailer there. So you get a pretty good idea. First thing you want to do on any RV is you want to drain all your tanks. Um, first step will be to open up all your blade valves, uh, all of your gray water tanks and your black water tank. You want to go ahead and flush those out. Um, you want to go ahead and flush your black water tank. Um, some newer RVs um, will have a black water flush inlet. It'll look like a normal hose inlet, but it'll say black water flush. Um, this older one does not, and a lot of newer ones actually don't either. So what you can do is uh, get an RV flushing wand. Um, it's basically a, a straight wand with a little spinning end. You attach a hose to it, stick it down your toilet, and turn it on. Um, I would go ahead and flush your black water tank for a good 20-30 minutes. Um, try to get every little bit of uh, debris or toilet paper out of there. Um, what you don't want is for that uh, fecal matter and toilet paper, paper to uh, harden and solidify in your black water tank and especially around your, your blade valve. Um, they actually call it a poor man's concrete because once it dries and hardens it, uh, it doesn't dissolve easily and it's hard to get out of the tank. So um, if that stuff hardens around the seal of your blade valve, um, these are going to sit open for the winter to keep uh, keep uh, pressure out of the system and uh, to keep it uh, open and dry uh, so you don't get a, a funky stink in there uh, over the winter time. Um, so when you go to use this again at the summertime, if you've got stuff that's hardened around the blade valve, um, you're basically just going to push it into the seal and you'll end up with a leaking blade valve or maybe even a failed blade valve altogether. Um, so drain your tanks, flush your blackwater tank. Um, after a day or so you might want to or when you're done flushing, just push this in and back out again just to loosen up any debris. Uh, actually go ahead and do that while you're flushing it. Push it in and out a couple times and then once you're done, push it in and out once uh, just to make sure it's free, to, free of debris. The uh, second, thing, second thing you want to do is uh, find your freshwater tank drain valve and open that up. Start your freshwater tank draining. This, this older model, it's actually got a tank under the bed. Uh, so I have to go inside to open that valve. I actually already opened it, but I'll show you in a minute. Uh, newer ones, you'll just have like a standard spigot that you open up. And that spigot goes straight to your freshwater tank. What you're going to do is just uh, open that valve up all the way, let it drain completely. I usually let it sit for about an hour, let it drain, and then close it back up. On uh, some of your smaller trailers and your cheaper trailers, um, you'll probably have the tank exposed on the bottom and you'll just have a little plug in the tank. Uh, I'm just going to remove that plug. Um, this one here actually had a, just a half inch plastic plug in the bottom and I replaced it with that uh, quarter turn hose spigot there. So all I need to do when I want to remove it is open up that handle a quarter turn and it drains. Um, these little trailers are pretty easy. Um, go ahead and drop the, the nose of the trailer down a little bit. That'll make that spigot, the low spot in the trailer. Open up the handle um, on your sink inside. And that'll allow, allow air to escape um, out through the handle and down through the tank. And that'll suck all the water out of the system. Um, and then once all the water is drained, uh, just if it's a pump handle, just pump that handle like a good 10 or 20 times to get any remaining water out of the, the pump mechanism. mechanism. Um, if it's an electric pump, just turn the pump on and open up the faucet for 20-30 you know, seconds to get any water out. Um, there's so little uh, plumbing involved in these little trailers that you don't really have to worry about running antifreeze through the system. Just make sure you have the, the faucet open while you're draining it. That'll suck the water out and then you know, turn on your pump for a few about 20 30 seconds when you're done. Um, you can pump antifreeze into these if you want, but it's not really that big of an issue. So, back to the bigger trailers. Um, second thing you want to do is evaluate your hot water system. Um, we are going to want to drain our hot water tank, but before we do that, we need to see if we have a diversion valve set up. 
on the inside. Um, those come in a, a few different flavors. Um, uh, and if you just have like a cheapo RV, you probably don't have one. Uh, check out the 1970s styling there. Shag carpet, you know, newel post, mirror. Eh. So what we have here is a an older style three-way diversion valve setup. And uh, this is what you're looking for in the back of your water heater. You are going to be looking under the sink most of the time on like a trailer. Uh, motorhome, it could be, it'll be in one of your um, basement storage bays. Um, but what you're going to look for here um, is the, the method of diversion. Basically a diversion valve um, isolates the hot water heater from the line so that you can divert water away from the water heater and still flush out the lines. Um, so this one here is a three valve setup and it's got one um, allowing water to enter the inlet of the water heater, one um, allowing water to exit the exit or the outlet of the water heater, and a diversion bypass valve. So whenever the valve is in line with the flow, it's open. Whenever it's uh, perpendicular, it's closed. So if we look on the bottom here, it's perpendicular to the line of flow. That means water is not going to be allowed to enter the inlet of the water heater, and is instead going to go up here to the diversion valve. We're going to open that so it diverts up to here. Um, and since this was in perpendicular, um, that closes water so it can't back feed into the top of the water heater. So now our cold water is going to go in here, hit the hit the closed valve, come up here, hit the closed valve, and just continue on to the hot water side of your faucets. And that diverts water away from the hot water heater. I'll show you another example here on this fifth wheel. This is a slightly newer setup. Um, I installed this diversion valve setup after I, I purchased the RV. Um, and I've actually even got a instant hot water heater that goes in line with the hot water heater. So I have uh, boiling water on demand uh, whenever I want, but that's another video. So with this type of setup, you just have a simple valve here that valve is going to divert it either into the inlet of the water heater or divert it into the diversion valve setup. And at the top of the hot water heater here, we also have the same thing. Um, this valve is either going to allow it to go back into the hot water heater or allow the hot water to come out, or it's going to divert the water straight out this way. Um, the newer ones will actually have just one valve. It'll look like that. And notice how the handle is straight with the line of flow. That means water can go that way. If I divert it, it means water is going to go that way. So usually the handle will point in the direction of the water flow. But on the newer ones, instead of having two valves like this, um, this valve up top will actually be replaced with a check valve um, and a T. So instead of having a, a second valve you have to mess with, um, all it does is have a check valve that allow, that keeps water from going back into the top of the hot water heater. So I'll come up here, hit a T and a check valve. Um, water will not be able to back feed and it will just go out the T to the other side. And that's actually the setup I have over here on the instant hot water heater. Um, so I can turn either one off or on at will. Um, but basically the idea here is you're isolating the hot water system from from the lines so that when you go to flush out all the water um, you don't have to worry about the airspace and all the water in the tank there. So second step in the hot water situation go and go outside to your hot water panel and you're gonna go ahead and open up your drain valve. A lot of times it'll just be a plastic plug sometimes sometimes I'll have a little plastic plug with an anode um, this one I've actually put a hose spigot in there so that I can drain it easily. So you're gonna go ahead and open up that all the way. This is gonna be hot water. Um, you might wanna turn off your hot water heater an hour or so before so that you don't have hot water coming out. Um, and if you're worried about water getting down into these cracks and stuff, go ahead and run a hose out from it. Um, otherwise, just go ahead and start it draining. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to open up your pressure relief valve. This will, um, 
keep it from creating an air gap. Um, once you open that up, it'll have uh, free air to suck and siphon so that it can all drain out. So go ahead and start that draining. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. You either have a plug or a valve. This one's actually broken, so I have to unscrew that every time. But go ahead and start that draining to drain out your hot water heater. And we'll go ahead and show you the inside here. This is a really, really old setup here. Instead of using a an actual hydraulic type pump, um, this actually uses an air pressurization system. So um, you've got a, a tank there that will take uh, pressure, and that little pump there actually pumps up to you know 80 psi or whatever, and actually pressurize pressure feeds water into the system. Not surprisingly, this uh, system has failed and it's been bypassed. Um, but if you were if you do have an older one like this and you want to winterize, um, you're going to go ahead and open up your uh, water, fresh water tank drain. Go ahead and let that drain. That one's been open for years, so it's drained completely. All right. So now we have all of our tanks either already drained or draining. And this is something you can do beforehand. Just open open everything up. You can open up your, your fresh and your hot water tr tank while you're flushing out your, your black water tank. Um, you can let them drain for a day or two. Um, and uh, you can do this in stages, like open up all your tanks, let them drain, and then come back a couple of days later and do the actual winterizing. Next step in the process is going to be blowing the water out of the lines. Best way to do that, go to Walmart, go to an RV supply place, and get yourself a air chuck fitting. This is a PVC one, they come in metal also. And you're going to go ahead and screw that onto your water inlet. It's going to be your uh, city water connection for your RV. Screw that on, make sure you get a good seal, make sure you have a good rubber washer behind there. And just pull this little cap off. Now you're good to pressurize the system. If you're curious about this older model, it actually did have uh, an air chuck built into the freshwater uh, tank inlet. And you can actually, you could have winterized it that way if the system was still under pressure. But because, you know, there's so many points of failure in there, um, you got all these seals everywhere to take the pressure. You got like, you know, 40 year old pipes and stuff. Uh, it's not any wonder that that system has failed. And so um, that the fresh water tank and supply system of this trailer has been long dead. If yours was working, um, all you do is uh, make sure um, it's sealed up and then you pressurize that. I do recommend using uh, shop air and a good com air compressor something that uh, got a pretty good flow rate. I have done it with uh, really small air compressors before. It just takes a lot longer to get all the water out of the system. But this is set to 125 PSI and it's a good big air compressor so it uh, flows at a pretty good cubic feet per minute. <clears throat> so you're going to attach that and then you're going to go ahead and put your air compressor on there. Now these plastic ones it can be hard to get it to actually stay on there at 125 PSI. Um, sometimes you have to get it. You want a chuck that has a little lock on it. So that lock will keep it on the air onto the fitting. So you can just leave it and it'll be pressurized. Next step is going to be to find your low point drain valve. Um, usually that'll be um, two hoses. On the newer ones you'll see a red and a blue PEX hose sticking out the bottom of your uh, trailer, usually on the the right hand side. Um, this, uh, this older model actually does not have one, um, so we just have to flush it with air. But on your newer ones, what you'll see is usually a couple lines sticking out. One will be hot and one will be cold. And basically what that is, that's your lowest point in the plumbing system and that's going to be your ideal place to drain the system. Um, so in this case, my, my handle valves are inside the trailer and under a special hatch. 
Um, I just open those up and allow it to drain. Um, some of them will have the handles right here on the hose and you just turn it, open them both up and basically that pressure in the system is going to push all of the water out of the low point. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and leave it open until all you see is air coming out of there and then close them back up and then we'll go inside. And that brings us to this step. If, you're, um, if your trailer does not have a low point drain valve, then you're just going to skip straight to the inside and you're going to go to your lowest um, connection in the house and that's usually going to be your toilet because it's at the lowest point. You're going to You're going to go ahead and open up that until all you see is air coming out and then you're going to go around to all your other fixtures. That's why it's good to have a high volume air compressor. You can tell how much air is coming out. Um, that's basically a full 125 PSI pushing all the water out of the system. Um, so we're going to go to each hot and cold side of um, every fixture they have in the trailer. The Until all you see is air coming out. So you're going to go ahead and open up all your fixtures, go around once until all you see is there, then go back to your low point and start all over again. You can pretty much do that um, as long as you want. If you're not going to be feeding antifreeze in the system, I would go ahead and do that until you're pretty sure you've gotten, you know, 90, 95 percent of the water out. You're never going to get it all because there's just, um, you know, the the water coats the inside of the pipe, so it's always going to be coated in there somewhere. But if you keep doing it, you're gonna... the more water you get out, the less likely you are to have a freezing problem. Um, but if you are going to be loading antifreeze into the system, go ahead and stop there and come back out. In most cases, you're fine. If you if you got a good air compressor and you blew out the lines really well, you don't really have to worry about the antifreeze too much. Um, however, if you were using a small air compressor and uh, you want to be better safe than sorry, go ahead and put antifreeze in the system. You're going to go ahead and open up your, your fresh water inlet for your tank. Make sure that your drain valve is closed on your tank, and then you're going to go ahead and add. I usually add, just add a bottle, or um, go by the, the instructions on the bottle because some some brands are different. Um, but go ahead and add add your antifreeze to there. Close it back up. Go back inside. Turn on your pump. Once you've turned on your pump, uh, go ahead and go to each fixture again and um, open each fixture until you see a little bit of uh, liquid come out. Um, so I would turn on, turn on my pump um, with antifreeze in the fresh water tank and I would come in here, run it until I see liquid come out, hot until I see liquid come out, uh, go around to each fixture until you see liquid come out. Um, ju you just need a drop. Um, that's just to make sure that you get antifreeze up into the valves of your fixtures because um, that's actually where the water is going to do the most damage and uh, I actually have seen the, the toilet valve uh, rupture due to freezing um, because of a system that was not properly flushed out but if you've done a pretty good job air flushing 
air blowing out the lines with air, you don't really have to worry about it because that little bit of air that's still in the lines, it's just going to eventually seep down to the low point. Um, and at the low point, you know, it might end up being like an ounce or two of water and it's just going to, you know, you've got a long length of pipe, it's just going to expand and contract along that long length of pipe. It's going to expand and contract in a, in, in line with the water. So it's not going to expand and freeze the, the fittings. Um, you're going to be, you're going to be pretty good. Um, but if you want to be better safe than sorry, go ahead and do the antifreeze. Um, I don't use antifreeze personally, um, because I don't want to get that stuff in my system and have to flush it out later. But if you live in a really cold climate where you're constantly uh, getting, you know, below zero temperatures um, and you're storing it for long term, you know, better safe than sorry, go ahead and add that antifreeze. So that's it for this edition of Trailer Days. Um, be sure to stay tuned for other exciting videos. And have a great winter.